Welcome to the Nav Viking tutorials. I'm Johannes Gudmundsson, founder of Anecta, a Microsoft Dynamics NAV Gold certified partner. Uh, we are continuing on our chart adventure. Uh, this is the third uh, video uh, in this uh, theme. So in the first two, I mean the first one, we actually created this chart using the generic charts and changed the role center to include this. And this is showing the customer balance by customer number. And uh, it's based on a table. So the second one, we actually did look into how to convert lists to charts and vice versa. Um, but this one, we are, we're going to continue on this generic chart path uh, and answer a question we posed in the first demo, which was um, uh, how do we deal with uh, multiple tables inside a chart? So if you have one table, like this case, we, we actually are working with the uh, customer ledger entries um, and you get all the data out of that one table, you can display that here and it's fairly easy to do. Just attach that table to the uh, generic chart. But if you want to get data from multiple tables, um, it becomes a little bit more complicated and you have to use something called a query. Uh, and this is what I'm going to demonstrate today. So the problem I have is on top of uh, showing, of course, the customer balance here, and this is only showing Peter Sados. I would like to see the customer, uh, I mean, the balances for all the customers per salesperson, and I want to see the salesperson name down here. I would not like to see their code, I want to see their name. Um, and this is a problem for two tables because I cannot get the customer name out of the customer ledger entries. So uh, the salesperson name comes from the salesperson table and the balances come from the customer ledger entries table and so these are two tables that I have to combine together and that's what I'm going to do right now so uh, if you don't have any programming experience fear not this will be very simple although it will be on the verge of some programming so um, don't shut me off right away <laughs> Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to just navigate here into the charts. Um, and I have a list of charts here. And if you remember from the first uh, video, we have charts here that start with Q. Those are queries and charts that start with T. And those are tables. So if you have table, then you're only working with one table. And that's very simple. Uh, but if you have a query, it gets a slightly more complicated. Now, how do we build a query, make our own query? And in order to do that, we actually have to go into the development environment for NAV. Uh, and again, this is not going to be development. It's more just building a query. So there's no real programming involved, even though we are actually in the development environment. Uh, and I clicked here into the NAV development environment and this should have installed, if you installed the full client with everything on the computer, you should have a development environment with you. Uh, and if you come in here, you can see that you have a list of all objects that are in the system, tables, pages, reports, etc. We're only concerned with something called a query, which is probably the simplest object in there. Um, so in here we have a list of all queries. Uh, and some of them you see in the generic charts are being used there. And we would like to uh, create a new query right here. So I just create a new one. Um, and I would like to use, so actually it brings up this new query window, or query designer. And it asks me, okay, so what do you want to put in here? Uh, and I'm ready with the data item. Data item basically just means table in our case. So yeah, I want to actually pick the salesperson table and that's table 13, salesperson purchaser in, in Navision or NAV. We have the salesperson and the purchaser in the same table. That's okay. Uh, and then I go to the next line and it asks me, okay, you want that table, that's fine. Give me a column and you pick columns out of the table. So you start with the code, I want to see the code. 
and I also want to see the name. The name is maybe more important for me because I want to display the name, but it, I like to have the code in the data stream that's coming as well. And then I go to the third one and it says, okay, any more columns? I'm going like, no, this is good. I want to change this to another table. Okay. Now we have a table underneath that table. So it's, they're connected together. You can see that from the indentation. Um, and I'm going to pick here the customer ledger entries table. Okay. And, and it says, okay, which columns do you want from there? I would like to get the remaining amount in the local currency. That's really all I need from there. Okay, great. So what is left? Uh, what do I have? I have, I'm getting the salesperson purchaser table, these two columns out of there, and then the customer ledger entry table, I'm getting the remaining amount. Okay. What we want to do is sum up the remaining amount because I want to sum it up for all of the codes. And the method type comes in here. I say totals, give me totals. All right. It automatically knows then that it needs to group by the code and the name. And it checks that off. All right. There's one more thing I need to do. I need to tell it how the customer ledger entry and the salesperson purchaser table connect together. So I go into here and I go into view properties. So I'm looking at the properties for the customer ledger entry table. Um, and here there's something called a data item link. I go into that and I say that the salesperson, I'll look for the salesperson code field in the customer ledger entry table connects to the salesperson table and the code field inside of there. So the code field in the salesperson table connects to the salesperson code in the customer ledger entry table. That's how they connect together. All right. Now I've defined what's called a relationship or a data item link in an AV. So I close that out and I want to save this. So I'm going to save this as 50,001. And this is going to be customer balance by salesperson. And I'm actually going to copy that because I need it again. Hit OK. Close this out. Now I have that here. 50,001 customer balance by salesperson. And if I go back into the client and to my generic charts list here, I can create a new chart. And I'm going to use customer. Actually, the ID is going to be the C customer balance by salesperson, CA, CBSP. The name, however, is going to be customer balance by salesperson. And the source type here is not going to be table like we did before, but a query. And the source ID, and look at this. I actually look up now and I go down and I see my new query here, 50,001. I pick that up. And now I go into the required measure for Y axis. And I want the remaining amount. That's what we were summing up. And it comes up with a funky name here. It's basically coming straight from the query, but we call this balance in normal English. So I just put that there. Um, and over here in the axis field, X axis field, I'm going to pick the name because I'd like to see the name of the salesperson. Codes are great, but names are better. Uh, and the chart description, pick the same description I had before. Uh, and then that's it. So now I hit OK. And I want to add this to the role center. So I go back into the role center. I go into customize, uh, customize this page, and I add the chart part, customize the part, customers, customer balance by salesperson, hit OK. 
And now we can see I have the customer balance by salespeople. I have all the salespeople here. And I can quickly see that we have John Roberts with 112,000 and Peter Sato with 946,000. Everybody else has nothing. So not much going on in the sales department or like everybody is really good at collecting except two, something like that. But, um, but uh, now we have a query actually uh, connected to a chart in the role center. And uh, this is actually really handy. It's easy to do. Uh, I recommend everybody to start using this. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. As always, we welcome any questions or suggestions. Um, so leave comments or of course, if you can subscribe, that would be awesome. Uh, we are trying to build our fan base over here at Anacta. And uh, if you want to look for further information, please go to anacta.com.